I've been working on this for my entire adult life since I was 21. I wanted to do something that in centuries from now, it would be looked upon as valuable. And 25 years later, I'm finally in a position where that's going to be possible. We humans have this thing where every generation to some degree repeats the same mistakes of every generation before them. That we experience life as a novel experience. We think we're doing it for the first time when in fact it's been happening for thousands and thousands of generations. And I wonder if we could acquire wisdom that wouldn't require progress based upon these kinds of firsthand experiences that we could update our learning algorithm a little bit. currently working on trying to keep my dad alive. His life expectancy is 68. He's now 71. He's past due. And every day he experiences is incredibly precious. I think life is worth fighting for. When you fill his vibrancy for life, he rages against death. That inspires me. I did the plasma transfer with him, which was a significant boost to his wellness. We were surprised at how well it worked. I took him down and got him the gene therapy this past weekend, the same one I received in September. And then I'm taking him to the Bahamas to do a mesenchymal stem cell therapy with the young Swedish bone marrow. And the reason why I want to keep my dad alive is not because I know what's going to happen. It's because I know we're going to experience a million years of evolutionary advance in such a compressed time frame that it's outside my ability to comprehend. I can't imagine, I can't think of it. And I want to be around for it. I love the haters, love them. I welcome them, I embrace them. I appreciate them spending their time to comment. They're speaking up, they're not apathetic. I love everything about them. I wouldn't change a thing. Being human is very hard. They're trying to understand reality. They're trying to deal with themselves. We all are, and it's an illusion that any human just has it all figured out. It is very, very hard to be human. We're all struggling. You know, I'm struggling less than I ever have in my entire life. <laughs> I've struggled pretty significantly before, but I'm deeply empathetic to people. I appreciate them showing up. I mean, they're engaging with me and they're offering me their perspectives and I love it. The thing I'm most excited about is we just launched this multi-thousand person study and we're measuring a few hundred biomarkers with these people. They're doing body composition, blood work, questionnaires, wearables for 90 days. And we're going to see what happens to the body. And I like this because no one else in the world has done this. I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's the best science that we have in 2024. I'm not owned by my emotions anymore. I no longer have to raid the pantry. I no longer am in a situation where I can't control myself. So it's actually really liberating. It's actually really humorous that people want to put me on trial for the one that's not happy. You know, they want to say that I'm not living life and that I must be in a cage of misery that built by myself. I don't know about that. As I talk to people in the world, I'm not sure that many people are thriving with their own mental health and wellness, engaging in their vices and adhering to the cultural norms we have today. I do think it's possible the 25th century looks back and they say, what allowed intelligence to thrive in this part of the galaxy? And they point to this don't die movement that it was the moment the zeitgeist shifted from death being inevitable to death being a maybe to death being something we rage against. After 4.5 billion years on this earth, this is our moment and it's our moment to capture. I hope we don't mess it up. This is the thing. It does not matter if I die. What matters is as a species, the only thing we care about is not dying.